Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back working on Barb and trying to sort out the idle issues I brought up last time. All right guys, welcome back. And uh, those who've watched previously will know that this is Barb. This is my 1993 uh, Mercedes E220. It's a W124. And uh, unfortunately it suffers from the horrible era of Mercedes biodegradable wiring. So uh, in their wisdom, they thought they would go green or something. I'm not sure the, to the exact reasons why, but uh, Mercedes decided to use uh, biodegradable wiring, which didn't last, it doesn't last, and uh, of, as such, all of the sheathing on all of the wires, basically every single wire in the engine bay and in the car, uh, just starts to crumble and crack and break off, and then you get shorts, and then the, uh, the car doesn't function. If you missed the last episode, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. Like always, do the things, like, subscribe, and, uh, and comment. That all helps out that mysterious algorithm. So last time with Barb, we had a couple of issues. We had uh, a massive parasitic drawer that was uh, draining the battery in no time. It ended up being the alternator. That is fixed, and it is no longer an issue. So um, the... Uh, the car is keeping charge and uh, and that is all fine. The issue I have is that it will not idle. Now there were a whole heap of suggestions about vacuum leaks. The issue is, is that vacuum leaks will generally make a car idle high, not idle low. Um, more air in escaping through will, uh, will affect the car's idle and generally it will idle high. I have already looked over the whole thing and I can't see anywhere where it is, uh, there is a vacuum leak. It all looks good and, uh, and I don't really think that's the issue. I'm 95% um, certain that that is not my problem. I think it's a much more likely issue of being that biodegradable wiring. But there's another thing that I can check first of all. So uh, let's get in and check that first. All right, so after doing some research, uh, one of the likely culprits is this thing down in here. Now there's a cover in behind the battery and it is the over voltage protection relay. So um, uh, it's something that the Mercedes of this era used and um, apparently that uh, supplies power to the cold start uh, side of things and that sort of stuff. Uh, it was maybe $40 to uh, order online delivered. So I think that is something to try anyway. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to unbolt it and uh, and put this thing in, and hopefully it's as simple as this, and uh, we can move on with this issue on Barb. All right, well, it didn't work. Um, it isn't the uh, over voltage protection relay, so we're gonna move on to other things. All right, so let's now have a look at the vacuum leak situation. Now, I know lots of people suggested the vacuum leak, and to be honest, I don't think that's the problem, and there are very few places where the vacuum leak should really create a big issue. Uh, now, there is the airflow meter, which is right here. So uh, I did clean this out uh, with some electrical parts cleaner and uh, the sensor itself inside there, maybe that could be the problem. Um, there are no obvious holes in any of the uh, piping all the way through here. And uh, uh, leading up, there's a, an open uh, port here, which doesn't actually go anywhere. That's actually blocked off internally. So I don't see the a leak there. And all this stuff, this side of the throttle body, is less likely to give any issue unless there's a massive leak the difference between what the airflow meter reads and what the how the engine idles is is very very minor really where a vacuum leak would be an issue is is after the throttle body or at the throttle body or after so we have this uh hose here which uh, i believe 
travels down through to whatever this thing is here. So uh, that's one possibility. Uh, the other ones are uh, on the plenum itself. There are three hoses here. So there's one that's capped off. I've double checked that is definitely capped. This line here goes through to the fuel rail. And this one here goes into the car somewhere. I'm not exactly sure what this one here does, but uh, it goes somewhere. And, uh, and the other one is the brake booster. And they're the only places, besides a, a leak around the uh, throttle body itself, which there is none, uh, they're the only places where it could be a vacuum leak. And there is definitely nothing that's, uh, that, that's obvious there. I really don't see anywhere where it could possibly leak vacuum. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a look and read the codes on this car. So this runs OBD1. So this is a very early system. And I looked around and uh, you can buy OBD1 readers and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, I found that there's an easier way and a uh, much cheaper way is basically you can make your own. So all I've done, um, I got these, uh, these sort of connectors uh, here that plug in and uh, I had a momentary switch that's got an LED in it. So you can have a momentary switch with a separate LED. This has got an LED in it so I can see it. Uh, and it's relatively simple. And basically, I just need to put my ground into pin number one. My pin number 16 is, uh, is switched power. And then the other sockets are actually for uh, what you read the code from. They basically don't have all the holes filled. But in my case, I have... Uh, spots for codes in 6, 8, and 10 only. So let's plug it into 6. And what I want to do is I want to uh, hit this button for about 2 seconds and then let it go and then count how many times it flashes. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3. Six. Eight. Okay. So, as you saw, I pressed the button for about two seconds, let it go, count the number of flashes, then do it again. Uh, and, uh, and what I've done is, uh, uh, first it flashed three times, then five times, then six times and eight times, and then back to three. So basically that has done a loop and it's given me codes three, five, six, and eight, and it will just keep going in that cycle forever. So on socket number six, we have those codes. Let's try it on the other, other sockets and see what we got. So I'll put a diagram up here so you can uh, search and find and make your own one of these if you want to. It is, it is so simple, it's not even worth buying it. Uh, but now I have my codes. I found out that on uh, socket number six, I have codes three, five, six, and eight. And then on socket number eight, I have eight and 13, and 10, I didn't get anything. None of the others have connections, so they're the only ones that I have codes for. So now uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, to a PDF that I found that uh, seems like it has all of the Mercedes codes. So now I need to cross-reference them with the W124 and hopefully I can find out what the errors are and uh, if they mean anything, if they're a problem. So I open up the PDF and using the search function, I search for socket six and cross-reference, make sure it's for the W124 with the M111 engine and uh. find the results. All right, that is very interesting. So uh, I found something. Uh, it's basically giving me a fault code table for the W124 16 pin, connect pin connector for models with the engines 111, which is what I have, 93 to 97. So this is the codes that I want for that socket eight. And if I go down, I've got error codes eight and 13. Eight is idle speed control, ISC at upper or lower control stop, or CC, or EA uh, indicates limp home mode. 
And then 13 is the Lambda control system operating at rich or lean limit. So after giving this a bit more thought, I think the uh, code eight idle speed control system could be due to the broken wire that was in that throttle body, which has now been repaired. And also as a note, this car doesn't have an idle control valve, it just has that electronic throttle. Hmm. I didn't realize this actually had a, um, an oxygen sensor lambda control. Maybe it's an oxygen sensor, that could be the issue. Um, the idle speed control system at upper or lower control stop or CC or EA indicates limp home mode. I should check this because I currently have the throttle wound open so that the idle switch is not depressed and I'm wondering whether that is giving me an error as it's currently sitting there. It should be closed and that, so it's not giving the correct diagnostic. Hmm. Let me delve a little bit deeper. All right, well, for now, I'm going to clear the codes and we're just going to see. So uh, to clear the codes, I connect my reader back in again, pin 1, pin 16, and my codes are on pin 8. And let's just check again. 1, 2, and a bit. All right, now I believe to clear the codes, you hold the button down for about 10 seconds. So, okay, one flash, which I believe means no codes. So we have no codes on there. Now, pin six, I had a look and the codes are all seat belt and airbag and sort of those sort of things. I think it's a, the, the seat belt latch and it's nothing significant to what's running the engine. So uh, I'm not worried about those codes. I've cleared the codes. Let's see if it makes a difference. I don't think so. All right, well that is really frustrating without any real answers still at this stage. I still have no idea why it is not idling properly, uh, but I think we can at least move on to doing a few little cosmetic things to make it at least look a little bit better for the time being. So when I got this car, both headlights have big rock chips in them. They're glass lenses and they've smashed and full of water and overall just look a bit terrible so uh, I got online and new lenses are actually quite affordable and easy to get and it's not a big job to change them over. Look at all the water that poured out of this headlight. That is a lot of water that was in one headlight. Uh, the cover was relatively easy to remove uh, just uh, a few trips clips I did actually break the uh, the clip here but hopefully there's enough there to still do it what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean up these lenses and, and dry this all out so that it's nice and dry so when I put the new lens back on again I don't have any more uh, issues I've got nice clean clear headlights and uh, yeah and I don't have to deal with this mess anymore so after cleaning them out, I put in a new seal around the new lights and uh, basically just clipped them into place. It's quite a simple changeover. And then I start on the second light, which is the same process as the first. All right, the headlights are now replaced. They look so much better than the, uh, the chipped and cracked ones that was there. And uh, I managed to get all of the water out from inside them. I couldn't believe how much water was in them. But the next thing we're going to tackle is uh, do something about these wheels. Now these wheels look quite neat. Uh, they're quite neat. I think they're 15s or 16s that uh, came on the car. They're in good condition, but I think we can do something a little bit better. I've uh, managed to find not the exact wheel I want, but uh, let's swap them out and see how it looks with some 17s.
So I looked around a lot. I was really looking for the monoblock wheels that are common on the Hammer, the uh, you know the Hammer 124s, uh, and this is the uh, this is what I found for a good price. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this car. This car is uh, yes, yeah, just to get us around, but it just makes it that little bit nicer. And uh, so I think now with a buff and a little bit of lowering, I think it's just going to look just the way I want it. All right, well, uh, it's still super frustrating not working out what is causing my idle issue. Um, still gonna keep looking and trying to find information on forums and things like that for people who actually know this particular model of car. So the engine is the same in this E220 as the W202 C220. It's an M111 engine, and uh, that is what I'm dealing with at the moment. At least Barb's looking a bit better with nice new headlights and uh, these wheels I think are a good upgrade. They're, uh, it could use a bit of lowering and I definitely need to get out the buff and buff this paint. I think the paint's gonna come up amazing with a good buff. But I don't wanna spend so much time on the car if it's not running properly. It's interesting because I can drive it, uh, it's only at idle. I can drive it to and from my work which is a 65 kilometer trip each way and it's totally fine uh, until I actually get into traffic where I have to back off and uh, and uh, when I'm in when I'm idling that's when it's a real issue uh, cruising and all the rest of it engine drives fine shifts fine all that sort of stuff is not a problem it's just the idle which is driving me mental so um, yeah any tips I'm happy to hear them um, yeah particularly as I said if you know these cars that's just another quick update on Barb. Um, like always, let me know uh, what you think, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.